Good morning. I'm Elisa Z. Thanks so much for spending your Sunday morning here with us on the Sunday edition. I'm joined via Zoom by Dan Lipton, the music supervisor for Officer and a Gentleman coming to the Fisher in just a couple of days. It opens on the 1st of February. Well, you've gone into the music business, which some view as like what your parents say. I want a, I want a doctor or a lawyer. I don't want a music supervisor in my life. How did it happen? Uh, well, first of all, they still say that. <laughs> um, <laughs> in your yeah. arrangements, we can hear the original as well as it being Dan Liptonized, right? Yeah, that's funny you use the word Liptonized. That, that's Is that a where, thing? Yeah, well, it's funny because we picked a lot of super hits, you know, mm-hmm. a lot of just bulletproof, like some of the biggest <laughs> hits of all time, like, like Lost in Your Eyes by Debbie Gibson or right, right Here Waiting by, by Richard Marks. And there's always that question of like how much we're going to give to you of what you remember, and then kind of what will serve our story and right. the character in the moment and what will sound better to modern ears and and how will this song sound in a totally different groove to people who've never heard the song because half the audience are people who who don't know the song right and, and really most of the cast too like they're oh you know, good they, point they're in their 20s probably and they don't know the songs yeah. from the 80s you have to help the the performers make it their own while still letting us feel like oh i'm home right we do Hold On by Wilson Phillips, but it's not a female trio. It's actually two guys and a, and a woman. So so like there's a lot of musical flips going right. on. Um, and even within that, it's like, OK, fine, we're doing Wilson Phillips with two guys and a woman, but let's still make it sound like Hold On. You know, like there's okay. some that you kind of don't screw with. Um, but then there's some that are even that are either lesser known. So you have more you know, more, more space to mm-hmm. kind of put your own stamp on it. And then there's some that are, that are really known. And that is why you want to put your own stamp on it. Cause it's like, by the time you get to the, to the second verse, it is a little boring for people, even if they love the song. Right. You know? <laughs> there's, there's the challenge. There's the challenge. And with each song, how many songs are in this show? How many tunes are we going to hear? It's got to be like 15 or 16, but it, it runs the gamut. You know, it, it, it goes from higher love, which is kind of a big open invitation to all generations, I, I think. But the list goes from that to um, we have Overkill by Men at Work, which is a great. OK. Rock oh, I forgot uh, about Men at Work. Yes. Yeah. Oh, great. Colin Hay is such a great songwriter. Oh, yes. Uh, also, uh, Renegade by Styx. OK. Which, um, we have Owner of a Lonely Heart by Yes, which is really like one of my favorite rock songs from the 80s. That's a great song. That's a great and, song. you know, I was an MTV kid. So so okay. some of these, like that, that's a song that the video is just kind of imprinted on my brain, you know. <laughs> um, and same with Love is a Battlefield by Pat Benatar, which right. is in our show. And Venus by Bananarama, um, which is another kind of big tent song, by the way, because that, that was originally hit in the 60s. That, I was going to say, like, I know oh. that from its first go round. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's an evergreen hit. Um, obviously, our show is anchored by Up Where We Belong, which is the right. Oscar winner from, right. from the film. And it, and it really is literally one of the biggest love songs of all time. Yes. And, and that speaks to the challenge, too. Like it starts how you want it to, how you know it. And then we take it in a few other directions, you know, <laughs> both both the harmonies and, you know, our, our lead doesn't sound like Joe Cocker. He's he sounds like a young he sounds like the young um, officer. Candidate right. Right. That he is. In, in this military academy. So um, it can't sound like that. It can't be in that key. What do you do have to say, Dan, to kids who are listening to this or their parents are listening to this and they're going, well, I think my kid has talent, but I'm not sure where to steer them. And here in Detroit, we don't necessarily have the same opportunities that you might have had living a stone's throw away from Broadway and being raised where you were. What do you say to kids these days? Well, first of all, just to speak to that, I, most of the people I know who um, have succeeded in New York do not come from New York. Mm-hmm. They, they really are the, the Midwesterners. I work with Kelly O'Hara a lot, and uh, she, I play piano for her. That's my day job, really. Okay. I play piano for, for her in concert halls across the country. And, you know, she's from the backwoods of Oklahoma. Right. Um, and, you know, my friend Brian Darcy James, who's, who's in the current West Side Story movie, He's from, you know, not far from Detroit. He's he's from Saginaw, the Saginaw oh, right. Midland area. There's a song and, about Saginaw, too. I was born yeah, yeah. in Saginaw, Michigan. That's right. right. We, we, I, when I do gig with him, we, we do that one. You do that. Um, yeah. But but secondly, as far as encouraging talent, I I, I think it's... Uh, you Look, I'm not a parent, so I don't want to give any parents <laughs> advice on how to raise their kids. 
But I would think I'm just trying to put myself in my parents' shoes when they saw, you know, my, none of, neither of my parents are musicians. Okay. And, and the, fact, the fact that I ended up as, as a musician and artist for my life so is, is very. They odd. have no idea what you do, yeah, right? <laughs> right. Um, what it must have been like for them to be like, "What do we do with this freak kid? He's into music and the arts." <laughs> I, I think it's just follow it. I think it's. I, right. I would. Think it's just encourage it and follow it and see where it goes. Learn from them, you know. And Dan, we were talking about how important it is right now that there are live performance opportunities. Talk to me about the importance of that for the cast of this show and every show and wherever you go when you travel as as an accompanist, how critical that is for us to finally be doing that safely. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's like air. It, it's We need it to breathe. <sighs> like I was saying earlier, that it's almost like there's not much going on in New York right now. And at the beginning of this job, supervising from afar seemed really attractive. But now that the tour <laughs> is out there and um, there's five musicians and like 20 something actors and wow. I'm, I'm just really jealous of them that they get to do this every day yes uh, and i'm i'm you know literally like checking in on all their instagrams all the time like living vicariously through them. <laughs> it's just a lot more fun than show business here right now so yeah it's it's interesting on this show I, um because so really almost our whole cast that they're all in their early early 20s and many of them graduated either like a year or two before the pandemic, or some of them graduated during the pandemic, mm -hmm. you know? Right. Well, I was trying to put myself in their shoes. Like if this had happened when I was their age, like I would not be in show business anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, it's really like a kind of extinction level event, as I think is the best way to describe it. Sadly, but uh, perfectly put, an extinction yeah, it, level event. Yes. Yeah. It, unless, unless you really believe in it, unless you really mm -hmm. can't, picture yourself doing anything else. And right. so I've, I've really gone back and forth in my head, like, would I have been like that? Um, what's been really amazingly inspiring uh, about this company of, of actors and musicians and this job is, is that these are the people who, who, who could not live without it. These are the people right. who, I mean, they're at risk. They're, they're risking touring because they love doing it yes. and, and love sharing it with us, you know? And that's so important. And and so it, it's just been really eye-opening to get back to the spark of why you do this. Um, I've, I've found that through through watching them do our, our show. Mm -hmm. And again, many of them, they, they didn't grow up with these songs. They don't know a lot of these songs. Right. If they know any of them, it's from their parents or their older brother or whatever it is. But for, for most of them, most of these songs are new. And, and when you get past the, the hilarity of that, and, you know, <laughs> the, the age jokes of that, I, I really get down to fascinating conversations with a lot of them about their music tastes and, and about why they know what they know, what they like about some of this old stuff. And, and then it, it totally flows both ways. And like, I've been introduced to so many younger artists. And it's fascinating to me what they're into right now, because it's not always what you would expect. It's it's a lot weirder and more interesting and arty and not as like pop charts as you would expect. And right. also, they like that's on the pop charts. They've kind of opened my eyes to some stuff that I, I didn't realize was as good as it actually is. You know? Surprise! <laughs> yeah. So, so it's that's been a real interesting surprising blessing with, with the job is is that kind of exchange of uh of music and tastes across generations and it, it just speaks to what we're trying to do with the show too because whether you grew up in the 80s lived through it know this music or not you should still be able to see the show you should still be able to receive this story clearly right and and love the music that we're telling it with um whether you know owner of a lonely heart or not <laughs> right, <laughs> you know? right. Um, there's the challenge for the cast members too and there's a lesson in fortitude shall we say for these folks yeah. they're saying is this my passion yes it is so i'm going to do whatever i can to make it happen so yeah that's a very good point what a, an entree into the industry with big boulders in front of them right you're talking about people who didn't get their you know their showcase so, so they didn't get an agent necessarily or... right um, or like they haven't performed since college because of like where the pandemic fell in, in their experience. So like the, our show is the first time they've performed since college. Like that's, wow. that's not lost on me. That's a huge responsibility to us, you know, to make the show good, <laughs> to yes. make it worth, yes. to make it worth them, you know, coming back to this, uh, in this risky environment, like wow. you, you want it to be really quality for them to yes. shine.
Wow, I can't believe we're out of time. Thank you so much, Dan, for taking the time today. I appreciate it. And thank you all for spending your Sunday morning here with us. I'm Elisa Z. You're listening to the Sunday Edition.